Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll continue episode 7 in the C++ tutorial for beginners. In this episode we'll be covering flow control with conditional statements here in C++. And I went ahead and already stubbed out the main function here. And what I want to do in here is introduce an if statement. So in general an if statement goes something like this. If some condition is true, then we do something so this is the basic layout of an if statement here in C++. And the nice thing about this is the if statement is a conditional statement that allows us to go ahead and make decisions and perform specific functions that are based on those decisions. They also help us create a flow for our program and help guide a user through the use of our program as well as many other things. So of course this is one type of conditional statement. Let's go ahead and use it. So we went ahead and learned about sin in the past. So sin just takes character input from the console. Let's go ahead and put that character input into a number. I'm going to call it num. And then let's go ahead and define that number as an integer. So I'm just going to type int num num. And that way the user can supply a number num. And with that number, we're going to actually do a if statement and check to see a condition with that number. So let's go ahead and change this up just a little bit. We'll actually rewrite this. So this time I'm going to do if and then open and close parentheses. In between those parentheses, we can go ahead and put our condition. So my condition here is going to check if the number is greater than five. Well, if the number is greater than five, then I can go ahead and put some curly braces here, both an open and a closed curly brace. And in between these two curly braces, I wanna go ahead and put the statement that I want to run in case this condition is in fact true. So for my case, I'm just going to go ahead and tell the user, hey, your number is greater than five. So I can go ahead and use C out as we've done in the past and just print out the number supplied is greater than five. And I'll go ahead and put an end line here at the end. And let's go ahead and save this and run this real quick. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and compile my program in terminal, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it. So the very first thing is I got a blinking cursor, and that's where I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my number. I'm gonna put seven in, and now I get the number supplied is greater than five. Of course, seven is greater than five, and congratulations, you just did your first conditional statement, the if statement, also known as a clause. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code and let's continue talking about this. Make sure to support the channel by subscribing below and hitting the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. So this is nice to know about. Now, there are many conditions that you can put in here. You can basically use any of the relational operators. So for example, let me just make a list of them. You can use greater than, less than, double equal, is equivalence. The exclamation point with an equal sign is not equivalent or not equal to. It's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And these are the main relational operators that we can use. We've learned about these in the past, but just know that they're relational operators and that you can use them in these conditions. You can also use multiple relational operators. We'll learn about that in the future. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about another conditional statement, the if else clause. So you have if here, but what if you wanted to go ahead and display something to the user if the number wasn't greater than five? Well, that's a perfect place for the if else statement. So how do you fill in an if else? If, again, you have some sort of a condition. So our condition was number greater than five. And then we, of course, have to have the curly braces again. And then there's a special keyword again this time called else and we want to go ahead and put curly braces here as well the basic thing that happens here is as the program performs a check it's going to go ahead and go into this if statement and it's going to check if the number supplied is greater than five if it is then it's going to go ahead and execute anything in between these curly braces otherwise if this condition is not true it falls into this one by default called else so let's go ahead and give this a try i'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this C out statement above in here and I'll paste it again, but this time we'll change this up and say the number supplied is less than or equal to five. It's important to understand in this statement that it could also be equal to five because if you supplied five, 
five is not greater than five, therefore it would still go into this else statement. So now we've stepped up the game here with our conditional statements. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this one and let's go ahead and retry our program real quick. I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna compile our program. After it's compiled, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. I'm being asked for a number here. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and put four, which is less than the five. So what do we expect to get this time? Well, we got the number supplied is less than or equal to five. So let's go back to our program and just run through things. So we supplied a four here. And first the program checked, was that number four greater than five? No, it wasn't. So it's not going to execute this statement here. Instead, it's gonna go into the else clause and execute this statement instead. All right, great. Now you've learned about the if else clause. Of course, keep in mind that you can use all these other relational operators as well in your conditions. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button for me. It really does help me out. And to make things finally complete, let's go ahead and talk about else if. So there's if, else, but what if you wanted to check multiple conditions, but besides just checking if the number was greater than five, maybe you wanted to check if it was equivalent to four. So I can do another conditional statement here, and that's the else if statement, and that can actually be put together here with if, else, if, and else. With the else if statement, or clause, we have a very similar format to what we've done before. We have our else if, followed by the condition inside the parentheses, and then curly braces again, and in between those curly braces is going to be our statement. Well, this time the flow control here is going to go through, is gonna go something like this. It's gonna check if the number is greater than five in this situation. If it is, it's going to execute this statement. If it's not, then it jumps down and checks this condition here. And if this condition is true, then it will execute this line. Otherwise, it's gonna to go to the else. One thing to always note is whenever one of these conditions becomes true and the program drops into one of these statements, it will not execute or check any of the other statements if they're put together. I'll show you that in a moment, but for now, let's go ahead and complete this else if clause. So in here, let's say I wanna check and see if the number is equal to four. Remember that double equal signs are actually testing equivalence, not just one equal sign. That's an assignment operator. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this down and say the number supplied is equal to four. All right, let's go ahead and give this a test real quick and see where we end up with three different numbers. I'm going to go ahead and compile this and run it once more. So now I'm being asked for a number. This time I'm gonna give it one. So it says the number supplied is less than or equal to five. So that just came through our else clause. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give another number here. This time I'm gonna give it a four. So we'll see the number supplied is equal to four. Finally, we'll run it once more and we'll say six, which is a number greater than five. And we would expect the number supplied is greater than five. All right, and we'll run through that one more time here in the program. We first supplied a one, so it checked is number greater than five, no it's not. Then it goes down and checks is number equal to four, no it's not. So of course it defaults to our else clause and just says this statement here. The second time we supplied a four, so I checked if four was greater than five, no it wasn't. Else if four is equal to four, yes it is. So it went through this statement here. And then finally we did the number six, which six is greater than five and it printed out this statement here and of course jumped over the rest since this one was true. So a few extra things to know, you can have as many else if statements as you want. You can keep them going just like this and test for many, many different conditions. Let's say you have a bunch of conditions you want to look through. Maybe you want the user to supply some type of input initially to the program. And based on that input, you're going to do a specific task. Well, this is one way you can go ahead and check to see if any of those conditions were met and then guide the user to a different part of the program. Another thing I will mention is that you can have multiple statements in here. It doesn't just have to be the one. You can have as many as you want in between these curly braces, as well as make various different calls, create new variables, but you'll have to be careful if you do make new variables and assign data types here because 
they will be only used within the scope of these curly braces. But we'll get into that at a different time when we do talk more about scope in C++. You of course can have multiple if statements. So I could do another if down here, some condition, and then my curly braces. Well, what's gonna happen here is it's first going to go through this if statement, and this is all combined right here. And it's going to check through this entire block of statements and then it will execute this next if statement and check a second condition. Well, that's about it. At this point, you can go ahead and use these conditional statements in order to go ahead and make certain decisions based off of user input and or special things that happen in your program, which is very exciting because this is one of the keystones of being able to go ahead and make a functioning program. So it's getting exciting because we will be able to make more advanced programs knowing this. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.